What? Don't go through my purse. Why would you go through my purse? I guess. Can you, can you, ever... you just dug through my purse like a maniac. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Woo! Bob the Dry Queen Ow! and Monet Exchange. This is going to be a wild ride of an episode. I'm really excited about this. <laughs> no, we, we do the most, but it's just, it's because <laughs> we love each other. Aww. We have to tolerate each other for work, you know what so I mean? Like work. Yeah, just work. None of this friendship like a political campaign handshake. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys are hilarious. Thank you. Um, so I just want to start off by saying, because I was talking to my bestie, Joseph, over there, um... My children love dry queens. Oh, work. Really? They do. I have two boys, Slash and Bash, three and ten. Work. Love that. And so this is kind of like a new thing. So um, during Pride, Mm -hmm. we were at a park in WeHo. Mm -hmm. And they were playing basketball or whatever and just like jumping around and stuff. And they were like, Mom, thirsty, I'm hungry. So we saw this whole party going on. Um, with all the rainbow flags and stuff like that. So I was like, all right, let's go. We go over there. It's a whole drag show outside. (laughs) Work. Um, I didn't know that walking in, but I was just like, cool. You know, I just saw like people drinking water and stuff. And then I I heard the music. So we go in and my kids had the time of their lives. Well, drag is shiny. It's sparkly. It's very, very colorful. Yeah, characters larger than life. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Like the music, the lip singing, like just everything. Yeah. You, like, might, you saw drag queens outside, which is drag queens out of their elements. It's like, it's like right. seeing a penguin at the Bronx Zoo. Right. It's like, I don't feel like penguins are supposed to be at the Bronx Zoo. <laughs> so if you see a drag queen outdoors, it's like, what is going on? Why is this queen out here? Because we love air conditioning. Yes. We love... Uh, I can see that. We love... Lighting from the no no right. overhead for yes. like, light, like spotlights. Yeah, we like for everyone to be uh, in the dark, us in the light, us having microphones, them in the sh- quiet in the shadows. Yeah, that's what drag is normally. Yeah, I, I I mean I remember when I was a local girl. I used to for for Pride especially. You you do like a lot of gigs outside and and like I mean by ten minutes in you are sweaty. It's right. just not the wig is melting. Girl, I, that's what gigs inside and Eric is just. <laughs> well, that's because well, when you're entertaining and like doing doing a lot of stuff, but Pride from the moment you are sitting outside on that. Fucking float. Well, yeah, you're it's sweating. June, right? It's June. Yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, why couldn't the cops have raided the Stonewall Inn on a cool autumn day? You know then, what I'm saying? Then Pride would have been in October. <laughs> Wouldn't it been be nice. fierce if, if 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 Judy Garland had passed away on like October 15th, <laughs> and then and then the cops were like, "Let's go raid the Stonewall oh, on a on a nice." You know, so wait, is day. that how gay pride started? Well, the, the modern uh, queer rights movement uh, started with the Stonewall, with yeah. the Stonewall riots where nobody was killed. And nobody and was killed. Nobody was killed. Because people, people hear riots and like there, there's a joke okay. a, around the community that um, some people think that it started because people were people were killed and slain at Stonewall. And that's not the truth. Yeah, and, and it was and it happened to be the same day that Judy Garland uh, met her Passed untimely. Away demise. Mm-hmm. Got it. So what exactly is that? You said Stonewall? The Stone, so the Stonewall Inn is this uh, is a legendary gay bar in Iconic. the West Village of New York City. Um, I mean, so Amber Amber knows a lot about like New York City because Amber, do you know Amber used to walk was was in ballroom. Yeah, I heard about. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. There's this whole. I saw this list recently. It was like like ballroom people who you didn't know were ballroom. People. Girl. Yeah. Were walking you seven or you're in a house. Uh, yeah, so I was in the House of Quran in mm-hmm. Philly. But the, then my with father, the House of Quran, like as in like the Muslim book? No, like um, uh, Donna Karen. But oh, these are called Quran. Quran. Yeah, yeah, trying not to get sued. The House of Quran. <laughs> Donna Quran. Yeah, I love Donna that. Quran. The House of Quran. I love yes. the, the Islamic Donna Karen. <laughs> Donna Quran. <laughs> like, the Quran. I was like, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, so I was in the House of Quran, but then my house father passed away. Mm. Um, and then the house kind of fell apart. Mm. Um, and then um, I became a Mizrahi. So Jack Mizrahi Word. became my father. Oh, face, body? Yeah. Of course. Face, honey. Word. Yeah. Face card never that clients, my <laughs> God. Have you ever walked? I've never walked. I've never walked either. I would love to walk. We should walk the same ball. I mean, so I, so I, so I could get you chopped, honey? Get well, you that's chopped the thing. and chopped so, there, and chopped. So when I was doing a ballroom, there wasn't a lot of representation as far as drag queens. There really? Was like the trans, yeah. It was like a femme queen, face, body. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like butch queen and drag, but it was never just drag. Drag. Yeah. Yeah. How you guys feel about that? Is it? Is it? Has it changed? So, growing up in New York City, I used to go to a lot of kiki functions with my friend. My friend William was a member of the of the House of Ebony, and then we used to him and my friend Lonnie. Lonnie used to walk um, uh, uh, Butch Queen categories 
And we used to go to like kiki functions, kiki functions with them. But even when I was like, what? I was like 13, 14 at that time. I never remember seeing drag. And I kind of wanted to kind of get into ballroom, but I was like, no, let me not do it. Cause, cause then I was still in the fucking closet trying to act like I was straight with my big ass booty, my big ass ass. I'm like, I'm straight, and, what y'all talking about? It. And selling it. <laughs> and selling it. You know what I mean? So like, I thought it, it would it was signal that I was too gay. So I never got into ballroom as a kid, but. Mm. When I, I, mean, I, I moved to New York City when I was 22, I was an adult and I, I used to go to Escolita, and, um, and that's when I got obsessed with uh, Harmonica Sunbeam. Shout out Harmonica Sunbeam, who who worked at Escolita, and she would sometimes do Vogue nights, and I would just be like, "Was she in the house?" And uh, Harmonica Sunbeam was not in the house, okay. but she was, but she worked at Escolita, right? And um, I would see her. I, I would just, and I just became obsessed with with her specifically, and going to see shows there, and going to see balls there, and you know. Stumbling across up upon like Laomi there, and mm -hmm. this is in there, um, in like 2009, 2010, 2000, up to like maybe like 2000, like probably. Oh, yeah, I was out of 12. it by then, yeah, yeah, yeah. I but, was out but, of it. But, it, but I mean, but you know, I, some of the queens I, I love are, are from the ballroom scene, but there isn't there, there seems to be this notion that like drag and ballroom don't have any crossover, they do actually. People like Pepper LaBeja, mm -hmm. um, uh, Dorian Corey, she Dorian was... Corey, Crystal LaBeja, yeah, you know, there's a lot of a crossover. I think all somewhere around 2009 when RuPaul's Drag Race came out, mm, that there seemed sense. to be like a divide in the, in the world as if like drag and um, ballroom are like these mutually exclusive things. When the truth is, drag is just a discipline, and ballroom is a community, and um, and nightlife is a community. You know what I mean? So yeah. the overarching nightlife community that drag belongs to. Drag is a discipline. Voguing is a discipline. You know, runaway is a discipline. They're all disciplines that live within the category, the overarching thing of nightlife. Yeah. 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 So, what's the difference between cross dressing and drag? Is that just Very an little. antiquated? <laughs> I mean, is that an antiquated like way of just saying drag? So, well, or? some queens still define themselves as cross dressers. Like, bitch, I am, a, I am a cross dresser. Because then, because then, with even cross dresser, you have transvestite as well. But transvestite, transvestitism, transvestis, transvestism, trans, transvestism. Well, people really use like the, the, someone. The, the probably one of the most popular uh, people using the term transvestite was uh, Eddie Izzard. Eddie Izzard, and yeah. who. Uh, uh, who actually uh, doesn't really use the term anymore? And uh, Eddie is her. She's now uh, identifies as a trans woman. Mm. No, she does. I think. Yeah. Does she? Yeah. For sure. So, what's the it. difference between all three? So, so I mean, tra so a trans is like someone who who wears women's who wears women's clothes and likes to have sex wearing those garments. Not but necessarily. Not, yeah, it is. It's not always about the sex. It is. That's not. I'm pretty. We we have Do we our have phones. To <laughs> yeah, we see. It's not about the sex. I just want to tell there. See, that's the thing because I like I really don't know. It's a term that people don't really. So, transvestite is a bit of an archaic term. People don't okay. really use it much anymore. That makes but sense. It's, it's not about. Listen, transvestite, a person who dresses in clothes primarily associated with the other sex. For for sexual pleasure. Okay. What, what is, who is this from? Mm. Urban Dictionary? <laughs> <laughs> Urban Dictionary. Where is that from? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's the source, Mary? Yeah. The source is... How many definitions are you scrolling past? McLean Clinic. Them? McLean Clinic. Well, topsurgery.california. Maybe they're, they're not the no, most I, reputable. I would, so uh, it's a bit of an archaic term, okay. right? Um, but there, but in the world of transvestism and, and cross-dressing, there was a lot of sexual gratification in it. Yes. There, there are people, uh, sometimes you'll notice that people who fall into the category of cross-dressers and transvestites tend to sometimes be a little repressed. Um, would, yeah. and, and, and and living kind like of kind of like yeah, a double like life thing, right. like a double life thing yeah. almost. But also, I like the term cross dresser, and I I just I think it's just camp, and I love to call myself a cross dresser because I, I because of how camp it is to me. I think what it is is sometimes when when you have cis straight people using the term cross dresser, it seems like it is coming with vitriol. It it, it is coming with some type of shame, like you like you're right. saying it to, to to demean that person or shame that person. When amongst ourselves and amongst the community, there is no shame in calling someone a cross dresser. You're Cross have I what? Called yourself a cross Yeah, of course. Yeah. Many, many times I've been But it's kind of camp, and it's a kind yeah. of a bit of re uh, reclaiming yeah. of of uh, something that could be once used to be like, yeah, I'm fucking cross dress and be like, I know, and I'm killing it. Right. So it's basically like just owning it. Yeah. At this point. And yeah. a drag queen, I would say drag. Drag is like just uh, creating art and blurring the gender line. You know what I mean? So it doesn't have to be full. 
opposite of what the sex, the, the gender you identify as, you know, sometimes it can be just, if even if you're like, if you're a cis woman and you're doing like hyper femme drag, it's still blurring the gender line. There's still yeah. this notion like, is, is this a man? Is this a woman? Mm -hmm. What is this drag doing? You're creating art and you, whether you're doing comedy or dancing or uh, just walking around the club and you are the visual art itself. That's the what I was drag. saying. Dra drag yeah. is creating art and, and like yeah, really blurring the When I was the in the um, ballroom scene, like a lot of people would be like, bitch, you are real, bitch. You are so <laughs> <laughs> you know and like it was just like you know my girlfriend they used to love that shit you know but um yeah that's interesting so speaking of sex mm -hmm. okay um well, I would love some how <laughs> me too listen it's been a while um I was gonna say how many like hetero drag queens is there like a community of hetero drag queens or do you think I know two you Out of one, all the drag queens you've ever met, that one they used to work in boots and saddles. Uh, you remember that one they used to work yes. in boots and saddles? I don't, I don't, I don't want to say their name. I don't, I, I, I don't know the what The white one. They used to work in boots and saddles. Oh, I don't know. I don't know the and white then there's the, the, black the black one. one. The black well, from, one from, from yes. the Bronx. Uh -huh. And then there's the one on Drag Race. Bitch, the one there on Drag Race. That's bitch. a white one. Oh, right? Maddie, um, Maddie Morphosis. Yeah, yeah. Morphosis. Morphosis. Sorry. Maddie Morphosis. Yes. Um, and Those are the two I know. I know Maddie Morphosis and I know the black one. I know a couple of straight women who do drag. I know way oh, yeah, straight, straight women. women. Oh, oh, is that a thing? Yes. Can yeah. You do that? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I mean. That's so interesting. I didn't know that was a thing. I mean, you can do drag. Can you imagine if you just start this 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 next career as a fabulous drag queen? I mean, it could happen. Like there have been I'm some on there have been right some on, on RuPaul's Drag Race. Her name is um Victoria Scon. Identify. She's, she's lesbian. She's lesbian. Yes, Victoria Scon is a. Is, a, is, is she a really? Is she a lesbian? I did know that she's a lesbian. Yeah, she's I a lesbian. I did know that. I mean, I'm fluid, so I can, like, you know. Work. No, I can oh, try. no, you could definitely, if you hit the drag scene, they would uh, upset. <laughs> I mean, you could get, like, done up so severe, they wouldn't even recognize you anymore. Honestly. Especially because you're, so no, you're so known for not having big, crazy hair. Right. Um, if you came out with, like, a. <laughs> Show up at all. Up, dude, they'd be like, who? And. Corset it down? They'd be like. Your waist would be even small, girl. You'd just be like, zero. <laughs> like, I didn't know you. I thought that was like you know maybe like cultural appropriation. No, 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 not at all. Honestly, th th that the thing about a lot of drag is like we welcome a lot of people into the art form. Like there is not this like, there is not. I mean, again, with any art form that you have people who feel like they are the old guards of people who are trying to protect it, you're gonna find people like uh uh, the drag is supposed to be this way. That's that's a given. But most drag queens are like, oh baby, come on, like let's like let's like get you done up. Like I love that. It's, you know, an, um, right. animatronic from um the Scissor Sisters. Uh, she was a big part of the San Francisco drag scene for a really long time, mm. actually. Mm. And she's a she's a cis woman. Um, and there's 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 a lot of uh, especially in the New York City nightlife scene. There's a lot of um, women who are like Broadway stars who work in the New York City nightlife scene. There's a lot of interweaving. I mean, most of the drag queens are assigned male at birth. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of um, there's a lot of pussy power in drag. Do you guys yeah. don't get sick of like all the glam constantly? <sighs> You or it's know, like that's something that you look forward to because I I hate it. It depends. Sometimes, like it's a lot. Sometimes I'm like, Ugh, I cannot got to sit here and like an hour and a half later I'm gonna be done with this glam. I mean, note that none of us are in. Neither of us is. In, <laughs> you, right, you are in no, more, yeah, you have, you, All the makeup in this studio is, is on one. <laughs> Is in one chair. <laughs> um, like sometimes that does get annoying, but I have to say, once I get started and when I get done, I'll be like, oh baby, but it was worth it though. Like it just sometimes just getting started is the annoying part. And then when you right. get through it, you're like, especially when the glam is sitting and like you know you look fucking good. It's like, well, yeah. You know, I really, I really love getting in drag, uh, especially for like gigs. It just depends on what the th what the thing is. Like, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I, I'm. You were rarely see me out in these streets just tipping around in drag, which I used. I used to get up in drags to go to all. I would get in the, on the train, leave my house in full drag, get on the train, not be home until like 5 a.m. Still in the outfit. I in the leotard. I walked out my front door in, in on the Upper West Side. Um, but nowadays, I, I love the idea of getting together a good look. I love a good show. But I do get dressed up less than I used to because honestly, it does get exhausting. It, it the makeup right. takes a long time. Drag is not my drag. It's not particularly comfortable. I'm wearing the hip pads and the corset, and my he my head hurts, and it's all like you know pulled back, and the lipstick gets all crusty, and just right. like, it just it's too much for it's me. Too long. Not for me, I'm. So how often would you say you go up and drag? Like, 
per week. So back in New York City, when I before I was on ever on TV and I was I'm just a working local girl in New York, I had I had seven shows a week over six. I worked every day except Friday night. So I had like a show every night and plus two on Saturdays. So I would so I was getting in drag at least six days out of the week. Um, and now since Drag Race again, I, I, I am I working a lot, but I get to like, for example, a, t- a typical week looks like I do some stand up shows in drag, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then I'll have like a gig here on a Saturday. So may- maybe four four times out of the week. You do gigs in the city? No, like I'm saying. On a oh, you said when you said here, I thought you okay yeah, here and there. You mean like around there, the way. Yeah, around. So some maybe so average average three four times a week I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say maybe a little. It depends on because my gigs kind of ebb and flow. I used to be a, a hardcore working. You know, uh, I seven, gave her a lot of the, her work in the city. That is me. categorically false. I, I did. To, okay, anyway, I used to do a lot of shows in the city. Um, but now I would say I'm in drag in the month. If there's 31 days in the month, I'm probably in drag maybe seven times. Uh, but then, like, but I'm about to go on tour, and once I'm on tour, I'll be in drag maybe like you know four or five times a week. Yeah. Yeah. Is it cheating to like have a makeup artist do your makeup as a drag queen? No, no. It is not. It's no. You're, you're still taking the same amount of time. Okay. Uh, Even longer. Yeah, way longer actually. Yeah. When I, I have I have a makeup artist who helps me out when I do uh, when I was on the show. We're here. Um, I had a makeup artist do my makeup there, and it was always a lot, a much more strenuous process for me personally to have uh, her do my makeup than to just sit down and do it myself. I can right. get my makeup banged out in, in less than an hour. I know, I know the road, the maps of this road. You know what I mean? But when she would do it, she knows it pretty well too. But she just, she also had, uh, does more detail. She's a, a much, she's a better makeup artist than I am. She really, she's the Emmy Award winning makeup artist. She goes in on all these like colors and mixing and this and that, mm-hmm. and I'm just like. Uh, trying to look, do do the face I know how to do. She's experimenting, trying new shapes and colors. <laughs> and I'm like, this, that's the eye I've been doing. I'm doing the eye I've been doing for, you know, five years now. Yeah, by myself, I, it takes me, like, just to do my makeup, Glenn takes me about, like, 45 minutes. And it, that's because, again, I've done bad. it. Yeah, I, I, I do it so much. I'm just like, and I can, like, toss it on. But if someone else will do, do it, they'll take, like, maybe, like, two hours. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like... Because it's, uh, like, so many layers and baking layers. and, like, all kinds right. of shit. Right, and you got to yeah. put the concealer on. Do you do on. your own makeup? Um, no. <laughs> to be honest. No. You was like, I'm not going to lie, I'm going to tell the truth. No, no, no. no it's, not that. it's just, like, on a regular... So, like, I'm a mom of two. Mm-hmm. So I usually just Busy. put on some, like, um, tinted moisturizer, mm-hmm. maybe a little mascara, some lip gloss, and call it a fucking day. Because yeah. I don't have time. That is, that is, it is, it is, it, it's putting on makeup every day is a lot. People it's who put a on makeup, lot. I, I be seeing people in these streets. Like, I will be at the, the store or something at 8 in the morning. And I'm Blam. like, you have a full face of makeup that on at 8 in the wild. morning. When did you wake up? Yeah. yeah. When did you wake up? It's well, that's wild. what I was asking because it's like, I so I wake up and my makeup artist is at my house. Uh, just sitting in my glam room waiting, waiting for, for me you. to like... And it's exhausting. <laughs> and you like choose, you choose to do this. I'm just like... And I'm just that. sitting there like half asleep, like getting my makeup done. That's the part about getting, like getting someone to do your makeup. It, it, to me, that's a great part of it. Like, Cause I've seen people literally just asleep and the makeup's getting done. Like to me, that would be amazing to just close my eyes and wake <laughs> up and two hours later and be done. That sounds amazing. Well, it, it is hard to do someone's makeup when they're asleep. Cause you know, the makeup artist always like, Tilt your head this way. Look up. Right, look down. True. Look to look to the left. Look to the look to the you know, that kind of thing. But yeah, I I I wouldn't. I, I don't think I have. I wouldn't have the fortitude to be a makeup artist. I would not. I, I don't have what it takes. Yeah, to... or a stylist. I, I always ask my stylist. I'm like, why do you do this for a living? This is terrible. <laughs> they have to really love it. Yeah, they have such a of love and a passion for fashion and, uh, and like an obsession yeah, for makeup mm-hmm. and like the they they just when people you know people who love makeup they'd be like hand them a new mascara they're like oh yeah. girl, I get this this you know. Cat Von D just dropped this new bit bop boop and Trixie just dropped a new sup sup and Kimchi Chic Beauty just dropped a new I can't wait to do and Bomo Beauty just dropped Kimchi sends me stuff all the time all the time she does I I have 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 so much makeup pro like from uh, from one side Kimchi uh, Kevin Aquan like I have so I I just give it away to family members it's just it's too I can never use this I can never use it you heard that Kevin Aquan (laughs) family members wow I still have all the makeup they sent me Wow, some people. That's a lie. No. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. A lot of take to determine if that was a lie. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I heard that you got arrested very early on. 
Um, Earlier today? Who told you? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find parking. Early on in your career, mm -hmm. um, being in drag. Yeah, I got arrested. I, it was it was it was activism, so it was it was okay. it wasn't like solicitation, <laughs> activism and like a little cocaine and a small a amount of uh, crack cocaine. <laughs> no, I was I was doing uh, activism back in like 2010, 2012. I can't remember what year it was when I got arrested. Um, but the fun story is when I got arrested because we 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 knew we were going to get arrested. I knew I was getting arrested. There. That was the plan to get arrested. And I was like, I don't know how long I'm going to be in jail. Why so were you I, arrested? Because you were soliciting blocking traffic. Blocking traffic. Okay. Do you know what soliciting is? I, th I thought you were. Weren't y'all selling like something about? Well, soliciting is sex work. Uh, yeah. Were you sucking dick on the not, corner? I was not selling pussy on the <laughs> you street. You were no. selling pussy. I was not on the street. I was giving pussy. I was <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was like, I don't know how long I'm going to be in. I don't know how long I'm going to be in in jail. So I I had this plan. And so I had a <laughs> did I ever tell you this? No. I had a bagel under my wig. Uh-uh. Yes, my my <laughs> breasts were made of cashews. I had cliff bars under my hip pads. Baby, I had a full Thanksgiving meal. I was like, if we're here for the weekend, I got y'all. You amazing. had a sweaty bagel under your because you were you were outside in the summer, so it's sweaty it and hot in a sandwich summer. bag. It was in a sandwich bag. Was it a sandwich bag? No. Amber, I'll tell you that that raw that raw <laughs> bagel was on that okay, bald ass all, head. Bagels are cooked. They're not raw. That would be dough. <laughs> that would just be dough on my head. If it was that nasty bagel would just clear, all your all head. bread is cooked and then you cook it again the second time. <laughs> not the bread that's inside what, me. That's honey. what toasting <laughs> bread is. And it was in a bag because I'm not a monster. Um whatever Monet would have you believe. But yes I had the cashews were also this makes you also they, in bags. They were raw. The cashews were not raw. They so were. They, didn't they were. Check they were toasted. You in the jail. Right. We didn't. We didn't stand very long. I, we, we were. In, we were. In, I was in jail for maybe. Well, they like, knew you weren't like violent, right? Is that like? A thing? <laughs> well, they, that was a wrong assumption because he is violent. <laughs> shut the fuck you up. are violent. Um, <laughs> 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 violent, bitch. Um, no, uh, we were, we were in jail for long. Which I mean, but. But it's not because they didn't, because I mean, we did some more activism. Another group from that uh, group of activists got arrested later that year, and they were actually in jail over the weekend. So sometimes it just honestly depends on how the cops feel and also how you friendly protesting? you are when you get arrested. What were you uh, protesting? Well, it was for marriage equality in New oh. York State. And we were actually playing by the, we were playing very by the books. We told them we were going to get arrested. We, we let them know. The cops gave us the warnings. And the second time we got arrested, we were much less by the rules. We were very aggressive and they were not happy about it. And we put, uh, we put um, super glue in the uh, the handcuff. We handcuffed ourselves to each other and put super glue in the handcuffs. So they couldn't get us out. And oh, the they couldn't unlock them. And the cops were very upset. And they had to cut them. They were very, so they, they, threw, they threw them in jail over the mm. weekend. Yeah. Them, but not you? I would know because you can't when you when you work when you, if you're doing like this kind of activity if you're with a group I was a group called Queer Rising they really advise against being arrested uh, twice within six months so you have to wait you should be waiting I mean I'm not telling you to go get arrested this is what I did uh, you, they're like you should wait six months before you get arrested because usually if you're arrested for any kind of activism they will usually um, knock it off your record. Got it. You, not always, but usually. Got Unless it. you're doing it all the time. Have you ever been arrested? I got arrested one time in New York. Well, I got, so back when I like first graduated college, I have never t told this story. I was Exclusive. like, and, and I didn't Soliciting. need. Soliciting. <laughs> again, giving. And I didn't need to do this, but I stole a liquid liner from Target. And then they're like, and this is my shocked face. <laughs> and as I was walking out, <laughs> like they're like, hey. And then they like brought me into the room and like they 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 handcuffed me, and but they gave me a citation. They didn't take me to the thing. But I got arrested because I was just coming up in, in in drags, and I was like, you know, I had gotten, I, I was walking through Hell's Kitchen, and this guy comes up to me. He's like, hey, are you Monet Exchange? And I was like, oh my god, yes, someone recognized me. He's like, yeah, um, I I I run one of the bars up the street, and I want to um talk to you about like giving you your own show. And I was like, okay. So me and my friend, I was with, I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting my own show. I had been doing drag for like six months. And then we're sitting at this bar eating and he's ordering, he's like, he's just, he's like all, it's like one o'clock in the afternoon, ordering all these drinks, all these, all this food and stuff. And then we're like eating. He's like, you want anything? I was like, no, no, I just want to like talk about the thing. He's like, you know what? Give me one second. I'll be right back. Let me just take this call. He dipped out on the check. And then like within him leaving five minutes, the owner of the, of the, of the restaurant came and be like, you know what, you niggas do this shit all the time. It's this white dude. And then within like two seconds, like five squad cards oh came on the corner. They pulled us out and arrested us on the sidewalk and I got arrested for that, for, for, for for dining and ditching. But I was still there at the restaurant. I had but not made clear, Well, you made it sound like you niggas do this. It was not a black guy. He was like, you niggers are always in here stealing shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah the white that. dude. That was what, that was what, it, what it really was. And on my first, I was like, oh my God. I, was, I, I cannot believe that, I, that that happened. It was crazy. 
How do you feel about like like people that have like an opposing view on drag queens? But they're just like, you know, like how we were watching the news and social media and they're just like, we don't want drag queens around our kids and we don't want them reading books and Yeah. I how mean, do, like do you, are you are you uh do you keep your composure like when it's like face to face or do you so I, I does it get heavy? I've come to face to face with a lot of protesters because I used to protest, and you know when you pro when you go to protest, you, the counter protesters will show up at the protest that you're doing. So I've I've had a lot of uh, my, for my activists, I've had a lot of time face it down with people who really, really did not like me for whatever reason they had in their mind. Um, and I, I even had it when I was in Jackson, Mississippi. I was filming for my show. We're here, and I had it in Jackson, Mississippi. This this guy really wanted to like, but they want to shout you down more than they want to listen, more than they want to hear anything, more than they right. want to learn. They just want to yell at you yeah. and get their point across. And um, typically speaking, first of all, if you think I started doing drag in 2008 and started going to nightclubs that are 21 and older <laughs> to hang out with your fucking kids... Right. Bitch, what you, you you have to pay people to watch your kids. You think I want to hang around your fucking kids? No yeah. shade to your kids. I did not start doing drag to hang out with the kids. Right. You know what I mean? I don't hate kids or anything, but I'm not in the business of like. Now there are some drag queens out there in these streets, and a, and I mean a few, a very few drag queens who want to read to kids, and there's nothing wrong with that. I feel like it's like fake outrage. Oh, it's oh, absolutely just, fake outrage. Just blowing it out of proportion as if like every drag queen wants to just hang out with kids all fucking day. Yeah. Imagine if there was a world. <laughs> I don't want to where... hang out with my kids all fucking day. <laughs> like, I love my kids, but like I'm happy to be here right now. I'm Imagine there's right. a world where there's danger to kids, right? There's something that's harming kids, something right. that's really harming kids. You go into a house and the house is burning and you're like, we gotta get these kids kids out of the house this house is burning we got to get them out and then the person in the house is like yeah but also these tvs have some stuff on it that's bad for kids okay well the kids aren't watching tv they're running around screaming because the house is on fire they're right. like yeah i know the house is on fire but this tv they shouldn't be they shouldn't be watching this movie this is a bad movie bitch the house is on fire the the, the burning house is the catholic church Okay, right. that's what the burning house is. There are actual real crimes that happen to children. Um, the number one leading cause of death for children in the world is actually uh, firearms in America. Mm. The number one cause of kids passing away in America is firearms. If you actually queens. care about kids right. and their futures, maybe we should start with making sure that people aren't bringing guns into the schools to shoot them up. Well, you know, now they have this yeah. thing called the JR-15. The, the JR have you heard about this? Before it is before. a junior version of an assault rifle meant for children three years You're and playing. older. You're I'm playing. not kidding. That is it. I, I heard it on the news yesterday. You're playing. Dead no, serious. I believe that. And it is to my teach... my dad wants to teach my kids how to shoot guns because he was military. Military. It's, it's, it's to teach kids so you, you, can, you can use it from three years and up on yeah. how to learn how to use an assault rifle. Like we're now we're now we're trying to arm kids with assault rifles as opposed to just banning the gun com completely. Right. So again, I think it's I think it's fake outrage and misdirected outrage and this is Isn't that wild? <laughs> this is the craziest thing I think I've ever seen in my life. It's crazy. And then so like so then when I so when you see these people who are trying to make um these laws to ban drag and to villainize drag, a lot of it also is just coded anti-trans legislation right. because the way that these laws are worded and the way and 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 the way they're used specifically is to denigrate trans people and to villainize them and to make them um uh, uh, uh bad people and it's just it's just all just fucking bullshit do you think superheroes are in drag and people just look like overlook it? You know, ironically, <laughs> when you're on set for a um a movie, uh -huh. there's a rule that dictates that uh, people who are in superhero costumes can't be in their superhero costumes for too long because of how uncomfortable the outfits are. So if if if, if Ben Affleck is dressed like Batman, mm -hmm. they have a, a set number of time that Ben Affleck is allowed to be in the Batman costume. And when I'm on set for a show and I'm filming in drag, my agents tell them we follow the superhero rules. Bob right, the drag queen is from the superhero. So you cannot have Bob the drag queen up in here in full dragoons for t for 10 hours trying to get the shot. You need to get it. You need to get it out. Yeah. And, and it, it's a bing, bang, boom. He needs to be out of drag in this amount of time because drag, drag queens <laughs> are superheroes. And they don't realize how, how cumbersome your drag is, right? So you're in three layers of tights. 
Well, for, for some queens, I, I don't. You you have three layers of tights, mm -hmm. hip pads, a corset, uh, a bra, a titty thing, a, a titty bill. Like there's so much. So then, so they're like, all right, everyone, we're, we're gonna break so everyone can uh, ten one for about fifteen minutes. It's gonna take me fifteen minutes just to get the corset off. Right. Like, they're not factoring all the other time that you had to, like, just to fucking pee. It's like a half-hour process for a drag queen. So we really aren't superhero drag on, on, on set filming something. But I do feel like superheroes, like, because Clark Kent, right, in this world, when he has on those glasses, people just do not realize he's Superman. <gasps> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if I'm a superhero, my, my power is just to be really cunty. <laughs> Maybe. With the power of bitch, be a bitch. Give it up for Bob the Drag Queen. If I would want my suit. I would really like to. I would really like to fly at the speed of like to as very fast. As I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna. Get I'm gonna give you some options for superpowers. Invisible. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you some options for superpowers, but they all have conditions. With great power comes great responsibility, and oh, there's also go. you got to give something to get something right. So you can you can fly, but flying is twice as exhausting as running. So when you fly for a block, it feels like you have run for a block. You can't just fly from here to New York City. It is ex You have to stop and take breaks, okay? So you can fly or you can be invisible. But for the amount of time you're invisible, when you come to, you are out like a light. So if you are invisible for 10 seconds, when you come to, you are... For 10 seconds? For 10 seconds. You can I'll be invisible that. as I'll long as you way. want. What are you, are you going to choose invisibility? Yeah. And what are you gonna choose? Okay, well, here's another. I, I need some, some follow-up. So when when I come to, I, I, as soon as I come back from from the invisible, moment you're visible, I'm just I'm. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to make sure I come to like in a comfortable place. And I don't mean like it's not like a slumber. It is like you are you you come it's for like, as long as you are invisible. Yeah, it's like Andy's coming. <laughs> Andy, <laughs> the, Toy the, Story the moment. I want to fly. But it's exhausting. Okay, run, running is exhausting too. Well, you can they're, be they're, invisible for eight hours. But you don't go running eight hours. Get back up. But, but, he, said, but, he, but he said, but he said, it's not sleep though. You, 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 I, so what, what? What if I come through and, and, and a fucking incinerator? And you I'm can, just burnt you up. You can make yourself come. You don't. You don't come to when it, without your consent. Oh, they're just saying like it just kind of. You become like, visible with your consent. <laughs> it's 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 at your will, but you're just out. I want to fly. But it's how far can you fly? Okay, for also. Oh, I can fly. You can fly half as far as you can run. But I can fly about like a thousand, well, like a second. So like I can get from. So it might no, take. No, it's like running. It's the same speed as running. Oh, okay, so you didn't say that. So it's, it's the same speed as running. Also, what? what well, nobody what? would want to fly. Superman. What speed did you give yourself? A thousand. Because what? Superman can fly faster than a speeding bullet. But you ain't Superman. That, that's what I was saying. That was I was saying my power. You ain't changing my you, power. But you are from Brooklyn. You're not from <laughs> fucking Krypton. Krypton. But you from you from Bushwick. <laughs> you can fly as fast as. The seven train. So y'all want to? I will be, give you the speed of the one train. That's so how fast you can go. So y'all want invisibility? I would take the invisibility. Yeah, I would. In that scenario, I would take. In that, that. scenario, I would too, because because also you have it's you have like nerfed flying. Option. I can fly. Fa I, I I can move as fast as a fucking Prius. The one train. The one train. Okay, <laughs> a Prius can go pretty fast. But a Prius can go like ninety miles an hour. That's not fast enough for you. No. You have nerfs flying, so of course I don't want flying. You're like, yeah, he wants to make it to New York and back in, the, in like exactly. An hour. That's and like, then bitch, teleport then, bitch. I didn't. I want oh, to, yeah, to fly. Okay, I gave cool. you teleporting, but if you teleport for every mile that you teleport, you lose a second off your life. <laughs> <laughs> you see, but you can't qualify because you don't know when I'm gonna die. I, I can die right now. Boom. No, well, whatever your whatever your death day is, whatever your death is gonna be. Let's just say that it's set and determined. <laughs> like we all know that, that everyone has a time. Everyone dies once. Well, some people die more than once, but the time you die, that is just when you're gonna die. Whether it be natural. Cause, Jesus. Whether it be it bang twice. bang, whether it be whatever, but from whatever that day is, you lose a second for every mile. So okay. if you want to go home from here, what's that? Ten miles, you're gonna lose ten seconds. Okay, I'll take who that. Who cares? Yeah, I'll ten take that. seconds. Who gives a That's shit? That's But they add up, right? <laughs> <laughs> a trip, a trip from here to New York. You trying to? You trying that's, to? Fit, that's that's twenty five hundred miles. How many, how, how many, that's, that's, that's 3,000 two, miles Yeah, 2,500 seconds is how many minutes? I, don't make me do math. Which I am not. <laughs> I, I, 60 divided by 2,500. Oh, now, now, we're, now we're in these streets. Now, this is, this is, this is why you shouldn't go into entertainment because you don't have to, 2,500 divided by 60, that is 41 minutes. Every trip to New York City. That's is, an hour, whatever. What? <laughs> how many Okay, but I'm not teleporting every time. But how, but the, t the temptation will be so great <laughs> that you will not be no, able because to I want to. I want I want us to maintain that Delta Diamond status. So baby, I'm I'm taking the Delta. I fly private. <laughs> Bitch, well, please. at least you'll like maybe you'll have ten years off your life, but you'll live a really amazing life. Exactly. You Thank you. 
I would not be teleporting. No, I don't. I don't have it in me. Oof. Oof. I don't want to. But also, I don't want to live too long. I feel like. Uh, I mean, I'm 35, 37 now, so this is easy for me to say. The other day, I was. Wait, how old are you? I'm 33. Okay. Paul Rubens I'm passed away. How old are you? I'll be 40 next month. Oh, we're, what? We're about the same age. Work. Yeah. You look amazing. Work, remember. <laughs> Paul Rubens passed away. Uh, P.B. Harmon passed away about 72 years old, uh-huh. and I was like. Someone was like, Paul Rubens died at 72. And I was like, what I said was, well, you know, he, he lived a long life. It was time. That's long. But the guy who said it to me was 69. I was like, oop. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. I, was I like, mean, <laughs> how old do you want to live? Like, do you, like, you want to live like, you want to you be like old? I don't want to be suffering. Right. Let's I'm already suffering. Let's end this now. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, you know, like, I don't want to be in a home and I don't want to be a burden to my children either. Yeah. Like, if it's just like, if I if I become a burden, just kill me. <laughs> well, everyone says that now, but then as you get older, you start getting closer and closer to death. And I, and I thought about something my lot to myself, like, I don't know how long I'm going to live, but I just have a feeling it's gonna, I'm going to be too old. I know that someone's going to look at me and think to themselves, you should have died 10 years ago. I just feel that. I'm just going to, I'm going to be like... <laughs> I mean, I like drink Coke, smoke smoke cigarettes, you know, drink coffee all day. I was probably all black on the inside anyway. <laughs> I smoke I coke, drink cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I th- people in my family live old. Like people in my family are uh, like 90s. All the old people in my family, they live in well into their 90s. Yeah, my black side lives, um, I, my uncle is 102. That's still 102? That's cool. Yeah. No, no shade to your uncle. That no, is and then my too... grandfather is 94. Four. Wow. She still this has all his hair and everything. This is too old. Yeah. A hundred and two. Wow. The, lives in Brooklyn, by the way. Lives in Brooklyn. Yeah. A hundred and two years old. That's wow. Still driving, kicking. Really? Okay, he yeah. does not need to be... Ch- really still no, driving? so serious. Driving, Word. yeah. And y'all giving him the keys to the car? It's just like he, they're just keys so the youthful keys the <laughs> on that side. Wow. Yeah. Listen, yeah. the, the moment my mom turns 65, I am taking her key. Leave <laughs> <laughs> Martha alone. No, I, mom, I need my keys pulled at 40, okay? I got three more 63? years of driving. Dee 63, right? 64, maybe? I think my mom's 64. 64. And um, she went to the doctor, and the doctor says she has the bones of a 30-year-old. Oh, wow. Well, that's good. That's also good news for you. He's, probably. Like, he's like, in your purse. I don't know if you know this or not, <laughs> if you have the bones of a 30-year-old in your purse. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm afraid to go to the doctor to find out what's going on with me. I don't, I don't want I don't well, want to tell They have the genetic me. testing now so you can see, see. like if you're going to get cancers and shit, which is kind of scary. Genetic but testing. But they do that test at 50. Really? There's yeah. also like some sort of test you can find out. Like apparently, the, the, there's, there's, I'm, I'm probably misquoting, so don't go, don't quote me on this. But there's like, you you can get treated for Alzheimer's, but you have to detect it early. Yeah. But no one ever no one ever tries to get it detected early. But like there is, but once people find out they have Alzheimer's, it is too I think late. Celebrities actually do that. Um, they found out really early, and they try to take like this certain. I need to that. I have terrible memory. My memory is horrible. I have a question. Um. Because you were talking about Jesus, and you were talking about, about Jesus. You said something about Jesus. Are you oh no, no, you said no. You know, you said you said, you said uh, well, some people have that twice. I was like, oh yeah, Jesus did that. Jesus died twice. He said or something. Yeah, did Jesus died twice. Yeah. So here's the thing. I'm an atheist, right? I'm an mm-hmm. atheist as well. Hey, hey. Gang, gang, gang. <laughs> um, but I get a lot of shit. I get a lot of shit for being an atheist. Same, um, especially if you have religious family and friends. I know. Well, especially like when you're a person of color. I feel like the black people in America love Jesus girl. so much. Obsessed with girl. Him. And it's just like I can't. I, I I'll never understand. But to each his own. Whatever makes you happy. Um, but oh shit, what was I gonna say? Um, well, I, mean, I think we're more likely to live in an alien simulation than the Christian God saying, let there be light. And Like, like this right now is like an head. alien simulation that we're living in right now? Yeah, I feel like it's just more logical. Not to say that that is what it is. Mm-hmm. I think you're right. But I think it's more logically speaking because there's, there's so many encounters, so many people all over the world that don't know each other, that have the same story. Um, and... It's it's all you know like the government's coming out and saying okay this thing is real, they have biological bodies you guys saw that the, the, like the bi- bi- bio, bio, bio what is it uh, like, um, like, non like, non human bio something. biomes non human biomes or some shit yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so I mean it's which a could thing. be like a dog or a plant but I think you're right I think you're right though because listen to this notion Let's, what if they created all of this and they're just like that could be happening I could see them 
physically watching us. Us, right? yeah. Act us but all not out. like an invisible entity in the sky, like a god that's like. That, plus I the think Bible is more likely. Oh, the Bible is just jack. misogynistic it's and like bullshit. violent and rapey and just. I Very can't. all that. It's, it's yeah. giving Game of Thrones is what it's giving. It is. Yeah. Do you know the Voyager? The Voyager. So the Voyager was launched into space. It was a satellite that was launched into space in like the 70s or something. And mm. It is out. It is It is billions. I think it is literally billions of miles away from the Earth. It is out past Neptune. This thing is so far away. How far is the Voyager 1? The Voyager is uh, 14.8 billion miles away from the Earth. Mm -hmm. It is never coming it's back. It's flying. It is, fl it's it is just, yeah. never, and it's still sending signals back to Earth. So hear me out. Ready? Let's say we've sent the Voyager out, and then in 20 million years, it lands on some habited planet, right? And then they open it up. But let's say there was something in there. There's some like the people who made it got a little bit of their DNA inside it and it cultured and it grew into something. It has landed on this planet and now they're like, oh, there's biomes in here. There's aliens from somewhere, but it's from 20 million years ago. There's a chance, and I know this sounds wild, but that the aircraft that they found that had non-human biomes in them could be from something from millions and millions of years ago that just did not survive the voyage to the planet Earth, because mm -hmm. we can see things, but bear in mind what we're looking, when you look into a telescope, you're actually looking into the past. Yeah. And, th and that's, by the way, that's also thing, you, like, even him right there, I'm actually looking at him from slightly in the past, because all you're looking, you're doing is catching light, right. and light takes time to travel. So when you look billions and billions of billions of miles into the, into the, the void of space, mm -hmm. you're actually looking at a picture from millions of years ago, and that thing might not even be there anymore, it might have moved, right. and they, uh, imagine they saw Earth, sent something to this planet, and then it finally landed here, and now what's in it is dead. Well, but I think it, well, I think they're alive. You think so? Yeah, I think they're very much alive. I think the U.S. government has them. Um, I think that the U.S. government has had a bunch of aliens. Um, I think the greys, from what I've, the research that I've been doing, um, is that the greys are the helpers. What are the greys? What are the greys? So the greys are the, the little gray ones, the little gray aliens, uh -huh. right? And they're the helpers. They come from the mothership. And the U.S. government knows about this mothership that's, like, up there, right? Mm -hmm. The average person can't see it. So they come off the mothership, and they come down, and they, like, get DNA from us. You think so? Yes. And well, what do they do with this DNA? Kind of study us? And... Uh, I think so. So they're, they're trying to find out why we're so violent, why we have all kinds of cancers and diseases. Um, and so I think, like, throughout the years, they're just kind of seeing how evolution, right? Because, like, we're smarter than our parents and our children are smarter than us. And so every year we get smarter and smarter, mm -hmm. just like yeah. technology gets better. Um, and then they say that there's the reptilians, the blues, the grays, and the tall whites. And so these are, like, stories from all over the world. Your boyfriend one of the tall whites. <laughs> We'll get into that. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I just think that, like, if you could, if you consider us here on Earth and like what we know or what we have come to understand and comprehend as a galaxy, there's just no way that we can be the only intelligent. It would be ignorant. It would be it's like there is scarier. no way that that can be a thing. And like in my theory, what I think is that is that they are out there and they may be observing us, but like we're just like we're just like we're just like a small ant farm in the middle of of the desert, like. We're we just we we're like not smart enough. We're not interesting enough to interact with. So just they're passing us by because we're just not. Well, we're, we're just wasting our time. Did you see that? Like so, anytime there is like a UAP or UFO, mm -hmm. um, they they go around nuclear plants and they turn off the nukes. Oh, do they? Yeah, it's a thing. So they turn them off. So like, I think that like if it does get to like I don't know Kim Jong Un or somebody trying to you know, let off the nuclear weapons. I think they that's when they'll probably reveal themselves if there's, like, a huge... You think? Yeah, I think so. I think it's coming, because I think there's too many sightings, too many people have, like, uh, they spoke to them telepathically. Yeah. And um, have you ever seen Moment of Contact? No. No. So there's this documentary, um, <clears throat> is based in Brazil, and it's, like, several different um, cities in Brazil, that these crafts, they um, they basically crashed, but there was actual aliens that came out. And is there is there footage of this? So I'm telling you, it's a documentary. So it's they, called what? Moment of contact. Moment of contact. I'm text this to myself. So it's gonna blow this. your mind. Every time I get someone to watch it, they're like, Amber, I can't. 
Oh my god, your drag name is Amber Alert. You know, I continue. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so basically, um, these girls in Brazil they saw the the alien mm -hmm. like with their own two eyes, and they even like cry. Like, there's grown men on this um, documentary that are crying, and they're like talking to the documentarian and basically saying like, "Look, bro." I know you're interested in this, and I, I see that you find it fascinating, but I'm telling you, once you see an alien, your life has changed forever. Because then you have to question humanity, uh, existence, religion, which we're, we're already there. But, you know, um, and then we're, we're not alone. And then at any point, you can look out your window, and one might be there. I have an even more terrifying God. notion. The, something that's actually scarier to me than the idea of a more intelligent life form observing us, the scariest notion to me is that we are the most intelligent life form. The scariest thing is that if what we're doing on Earth is the most advanced thing mm. in the observable universe. Then we're fucked. That is actually <laughs> the universe is truly fucked. terrifying. Is if is if we we cuz the idea of like a, a more intelligent and a kinder species, they can show pity on us, they can show sympathy on us, they can feel bad for us, but but if like, you know, if basically an in an, an, an orangutan stumbles upon a gr a group of you know something more intelligent. What are they What are they gonna do? They're just gonna go there and, and wreak havoc or not know what to do. So I think the scariest thing is that we are the most intelligent thing out there, or that if there is anything out there, it's just too far for us to reach. We just can't reach anything else near so us. So what about the notion that they actually live here, in like inner Earth? I don't think they can live here, and this is why I don't think they can live here. Every other planet in our solar system, it, not every other planet, but most other cre planets, if something lived, let's say, I know we know there's nothing in our solar system, but if there was something on living on Jupiter, whatever can live on Jupiter would be so big and so strong that we would not stand a chance against it. If something can survive on Jupiter, it it, it is like, it's like a walking Well, they said there might be huge. water on one of Mars. Jupiter's moons. Oh, one of Jupiter's moons. Yeah. I mean, I just think they're... Or I, tiny. If it lives on Pluto, it's like so tiny, it's like a little cocaine. Freezing. And then it get crushed the moment it lands on Earth because of our... our the gravity. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just... I mean, after our... On, on our podcast, on Super Rivalry, we talked about... Um, Available on... Uh, on yeah. wherever you get your podcast. We talked about this a little bit, and then we talked about, about fourth dimensional beings. So then I listened to Neil deGrasse Tyson's podcast. Oh, obsessed with it's him. It's so good. So good. And like the notion of something being, being li existing in this fourth dimension that we don't that we can't perceive because we don't have that that's terrifying like we could literally they could be in this room with us but they're just in a dimension that we can't process and we don't know we we don't have access to like that's that's scary to me that's so cool. like one could be sitting right there it's kind of fear because like something in the, something in the second dimension you can't harm anything in the second dimension you, you, like if something is a two dimensional being, you can't harm it because you can't. You also can't access it. You can observe it, but you can't access it. You can't change what's happening in a picture. You can't change what's going on. You can scratch it, but once you scratch it, you're actually scratching it in the third dimension. It's actually being picked up in the third dimension. So mm -hmm. something existing in the fourth dimension, which I believe uh, scientists have confirmed there is a fourth dimension. They don't know if there are beings in the fourth dimension, but something in the tesseract, you know what I mean, is essentially can uh, can move through time and space at a alarming speeds that we can't even perceive because they perceive everything different than did we they, so they, Did they actually find that out or there, it's like a theory? It's, 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 they're, they're, Neil deGrasse, as he said, they're theorizing it. Like, there's no concrete evidence that mm -hmm. there's a fourth dimension, but... I don't think... Well, well, that's what... I love to Google. They, from Neil deGrasse Tyson's podcast, the one on Apple I believe with, him, whatever yeah, he says. Yeah, <laughs> and he was saying that uh, the, basically, he was talking about like you cannot prove that it's there, but you cannot not prove that it's there. So it's kind of like a lot of scientific things. Like, yeah, like th there is no concrete but he's evidence. He's always very politically correct when it comes yeah. to that. Even like the when he talks about God. Yeah, he's like, if there is a God, yeah. then he is not all, all good, good or all, all powerful, right? Because he, yeah, that and uh, uh, his 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 theory on that, I, f I find it to be very interesting. If there is a God, if there is a truly a God. And the world is the way it is, and he and this is all He's according shady. to God, yeah, he don't God's give plan. Fuck. He is racist. He is uh, transphobic. He is homophobic. Mm -hmm. He is uh, misogynistic. Rapey. He uh, he he has created a truly the only religious notion I can conceive that this planet might be because you know that Mormons believe when they die, they, Mormon men when they die, they get their own planets. Mm -hmm. The only they get their what? Own they, planet. Own, they, they get their own planet. 
Mormon men, when they die, they get their own planet. <laughs> the only and where they become the god of that planet. The only thing I could perceive is that we are on some Mormon man's planet, and then he <laughs> fucked this planet. He right. was like, he was like, I got a good idea, and it all just went south. And someone came out and was like, Nah, Terry, your 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 planet is fucked up. <laughs> that is the only. If there is a god, he has abandoned this earth. He and was he's like, he's like, I'm cutting my losses. Damn. I am out of the game. Well, with the whole. Mormons- did that. With That's the whole fire in Maui, you see this, this 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 person posted. They were like, "Oh, God, Israel! He protected this this church on the island." And someone no, was like, didn't. "Yeah." So if 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 your God did this and he just decided to kill all these people, burn down everything else, but protect this, but protect this one church, right? Great guy, cool guy. No, yeah. I saw a video where this woman went to a mother and was like, she was like a pastor, and she was like, "Stop giving your child medication for his autism." And I tried to pray it away. I saw that video. And I'm like, girl, no. don't no, do that. No, and you're no. giving the mother hope. Like, yeah. that's going to fucking work. It's not going to work. Not. It's and not. you guys notice, too, that uh, that uh, marginalized communities are the most religious yeah. because they tend to have the most need for a for a god, they have they have the most need for a uh, divine being to yeah. save them from the situation that mm-hmm. the divine being Created. put them in. Yeah, you see what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So That's when you true. prey on people's desperation, when you pay on people's need to ha- to be saved, mm-hmm. then it's really easy to be like, well, don't worry, you know, don't worry if this life sucks because God said they were, God's got you on the backside. Right. God's got God's got you. Let me. Why is God saying let me get you next time? Let me get you next time, nigga. Get me now. Right. But as an atheist, I I understand that, you know, and I don't give people a hard time because I think that some people do need a God in order to just live. Mm -hmm. To think that there isn't a God, they'll fall apart. You know, like I feel like my mom needs to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. Like she needs that hope. She needs that. Talking about Didi. Didi, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Didi. Shout out to Didi. Um, my mom needs that for like just her sanity in her life. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I, I've tried to like sprinkle little, you know, she's not very receptive, and that's fine because she needs that. Same, I have know? a question. Can I ask? So, so uh, with your kids, like, do you, do you, do you, do you, do you raise them like to just you see what they fall into, or you like try to like just be like, actually, you should. No. So my my kids do have children's Bibles. Got it. Um, in their room. Um, because their grandparents mm. are all Christian. And so when they're with their grandparents, they pray at night before they go to bed. Got it. So my kids enjoy doing that because um, they're still young. Yeah. So they'll be like, Mom, can you pray with me before you know I go to yeah. bed? And I'll, I'll go like this and I'll pray with them. God or whatever. God or whatever. You know, so I, I'll do that with them because I understand that it brings them comfort. Yeah. Um, you know, so... But as they get older, because even my oldest son, he'll be like, Mom, you don't believe in God. Like, just stop, you know? And I'm like, but that's okay. You can like, believe you in can. God. We are praying for your brother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, was, I was thinking, because I've, I've gone back and forth. Like, well, I have kids. Kids, uh, it seems like a lot. But I was like, if I had a kid, like, I wonder how I would handle religion. And I think I would just kind of, like, let them, whatever they wanted to do, kind of just lean into that way and, like, work it out. But if they were, uh, but then if they, if, they, if my kid started being super religious, I would be like, Jeremiah, no, we can't. You're gonna name your son Jeremiah? I don't know. I just thought of Jeremiah. You're like, no, my Jeremiah daughter. How dare is like you? A very religious. <laughs> name. Yeah, he's very religious. Yeah, you, yeah you're, like, you're, you're like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Please don't be so religious. Judas, sit down. <laughs> so then, Father, why did you name us after the writer? Not like, Father. Did you guys ever look into Satanism? Second, I, I've actually thought about getting into Satanism. Yeah, it's but, really but, cool. Actually, and it's just about choice. Like I, I was. I, 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 it's about it's about self love. Like so, just being selfish when you need to be. To, it's for, very. Like, camp religion it's fucking cool it's very and i think like that for for our viewers and stuff like look into it before you judge it's not about they hear satan and they're like (sighs) yeah it's not about worshiping satan because atheists believe that satan is a fictional character that christians use to manipulate people Mm -hmm. um but yeah satanism is fucking cool did you watch um hail satan no no what is that it's a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> all I do is watch documentaries all day. Hail okay, Satan. We, we need to get together and watch documentaries then, because you and I will have a c- cackle getting together yeah, and watch all the all FLDS do documentary. Is, watch... is wild. The... No, I don't think there's a documentary that I haven't seen. Um, have but you Hale... seen um, uh, uh, Sight Guys? Of course. 
No. Oh. That, that was that was like one of the, well not OG documentaries, but I remember it was like the one about like nine eleven and religion. It was, it was an in and in, in, in the U.S. Uh, banking system. It, it, was, it, was, it was like one of those. I probably just things. didn't find that interesting. The, the zeitgeist is it's, it's wild. You should watch it. it. it that's something I'm kind of like I don't know. It gets a little bit overtly conspiracy theory, but it's a good documentary. Yeah, see when it gets like theoretical like that, I don't like. I you might like zeitgeist. Turned it off. Um, turned it on and then turned it off. Maybe it's good. It's like but it. I'll try. I'll try. Since you're gonna watch Hail Satan. You got it. It's like more political. Like it's cool. You know, people are turning it off now. They're like, oh, no, uh, they say no. Nah, they they, they say yeah, Satan. Girl, uh-huh. religion, religion. When you say anything, when you mention the word Satan, religious people they go off. They but feel attacked. They, they, they get so I angry. Told me, I, whenever religious people piss me off, I just, I just curse them now, and it's really fun to do because they I don't believe it, but they believe it. Yeah. So if a religious person tries to get really religious to me, I, I just go like, I just like go like. You know, like I was like <laughs> Satan curse you. They get they get really scared. Like, May Satan bring poverty, sickness, sadness, the, uh, and uh, the blood of Jesus, I the blood of Jesus, the blood I of Jesus. I call upon Satan to bring you nothing but sad. I don't believe in it, no. but they do. And in that way, they are cursed because their life is getting worse. <laughs> You're a mess. I love it. I listen. This, this, Satanism is just it looks I, like I'm not a Satanist um, yet. Maybe I should say, mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, after watching the documentary, because one, Satan. I love Halloween. I love dressing like goth, uh-huh. and like just the whole philosophy behind Satanism is really just being self-serving. Have and you I had a favorite like, Halloween costume that um, you've done. I like gore. So anything. But what's gore? one of your favorite ones that you've ever done? Um, I just said I like gore, but I will. Say, I, I I did slash from Guns N' Roses. That was oh, probably ooh, my favorite. Oh, cute! How about you? What's my I favorite? named my son Slash. Actually, <laughs> that's so cute. That's so cute. My favorite was my probably my mummy one. Although I did uh, once, me and my boyfriend did a uh, big red and a little bad wolf because he's five six. So I was Red Riding Hood, and he was this tiny little, <laughs> tiny oh. little big red and a little. Was big, that for for blood bath? A, yeah, yeah, big red and a little bad wolf. So you want to talk about boyfriends? We talk about boyfriends, yeah. Okay, so your boyfriend? Do you have? One boyfriend. I used to have two boyfriends. Now okay, I have, I have one. one. I'm down to one. Yeah. Okay, and he's a white boy. One to go. Yeah, white. Yeah, we killed. Guy, we, yeah. we we killed the other one. <laughs> he's, he's, he's oh, alive fuck him. Well. He's alive <laughs> and well. He's alive and well. And you said that he has a white boyfriend. I have too? a white boyfriend as well. Mm-hmm. I love that for you guys. I'm a product. <laughs> I'm a product of interracial dating. So. <laughs> You know, I'm here. Well, you know, in like the there was this like whole hoopla that uh, 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 that we that became because someone made this correlation that every successful black or not necessarily every black drag queen that. has a white boyfriend and and, and 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 powerful black gays only only date white men because it 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 because of their proximity and whiteness they feel like it makes them better and became this like whole thing online. Yeah, I want to I want to pick that apart because I that is bullshit to me. It's, it's, you can't help who you're attracted to. And then I saw like um the thing where you were talking about like race play. And to be clear, me and Monet are not only attracted to white. <laughs> yeah, yeah very but like clear. that's the thing. I've dated white guys, I've dated black guys, like yeah. who cares? Like I date who I want to date. I, yeah. I really like now I'm on to the Koreans. You know, like <laughs> whatever. Gotta I'm into catch at that moment. Oh my god. Amber Rose. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. people make this correlation. It's just like, honestly, it's just like who you find love with. It's, it's, exactly. it's like who, uh, color does not mean a thing. It's just like who I ended up, who, who whose dick I sucked that night. Right. And who would have, and a, 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 a one night, the dick sucking turns into two years But two like, they always make sucking. it like this self-hating, uh, like, argument. And it's just like, you can't help who you're attracted to. Because even, like, you guys were, like, joking around about the race play and shit. The, the, and our, the like, infamous joke, the Monet dragged me into the guy. I dragged you into You it. made the joke, and then I laughed at your joke. <laughs> no, listen to the clip, baby. We, we, we can play the clip. <laughs> but, no, but, but like, honestly, like, being, like, a fluid person, like, I would be into that. Like, I'm not mad at that. You know I'm what always, I mean? Because, like, what you do in your bedroom is, like, your fucking business. Your business. business. That's, like, that's, 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 that's what, that's what, what, what me and Monet were saying. And, and I think that a lot of people do a lot of things in their bedroom that I don't do personally. Yeah. But I don't necessarily approve or disapprove of. And I think that, obviously, there are, there are, there, are, there would be, there could be a, a smorgasbord of, of, of black people who could come, who would come forward and Asian people and, and brown people who come forward and be like, trust me, Bob loves, you know, 
black, brown, Asian dick and pussy. I I can vouch that yeah. a lot of people be like, I, I can assure you that Bob be knee deep in in in, in, the, in the gushy gushy of many different colors, and you know, and have a lot of love for a lot of people. And I think that the the criticism is more so about a desire to see black people loving black people, which is valid because you feel I like you don't it. get to I see get it. That. So that is a, it is a valid thing to be like, why don't I get to see this? But then I, I want to see my because representation does matter. You want to see something that 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 feels like something you should want to aspire to. So I do understand wanting to see a version of yourself represented in TV, but I also don't think it is everyone's job to represent you on TV. Yeah. Oh, well, definitely on TV. Yeah, I get or that. In any, or on I social media or anywhere. But also, I mean, I mean, and, we, and it would be disingenuous to not to not talk about how a lot of that is played from things of, I know from my childhood, right? If she can't use your comb, don't bring her home. Like all these things that you taught as a kid of, of why interracial dating and interracial love is a bad thing and it's and and how it's an inherently bad thing and it's not you know right. what i mean so i think that when these people these fans or or supporters or not when they see that you have a partner that is not black they look at it as this like like you're betraying your race or you're not or you or 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 or, or you or you or you're choosing to distance yourself from your race because you have some internalized racism or hate for your own people and that's not listen not I true. deal with it every day yeah. being biracial do you find that a lot of people try to tell you what your tell you about your race and tell all you what time. your race is supposed the to be the whole big thing with Jocelyn yeah all yeah. the time it's like bitch don't tell me how to I'm not no fucking white woman you're yeah. not gonna call me a white woman yeah. I'm not a fucking white woman like what I'm Jocelyn biracial. called you a white woman yeah oh my God. she said that it's I a... wanna be she was like you know what your problem is you wanna be white because she says I talk white and I act white um and that's then that's <laughs> So right. Nice. So I'm like, okay. So you're basically saying if someone is articulate, then that's acting white as if black people can't be articulate. You're the ignorant bitch, not me. <laughs> um and so Shots fired. That's just ignorant. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So but then it's like black people love her. Um and I'll never understand. It's like she literally like puts her hands on black women constantly. Is this Justin's cabaret, Justin? Yeah. yeah thinks Justin that Hernandez. black people are just supposed to speak ignorant or they're they're not black enough. You know, and so, like, I don't subscribe to all that bullshit. I am biracial, and that's how I identify. Um, but they think, you know, that biracials can basically be black when they want to and be white when they want to. Yeah. You know, and you can't, I can't just be like, okay, so for the rest of this interview, I'm black. Mm hmm And then, like, five minutes after that, I'll be white. You know, I mean, <laughs> I'm certainly not biracial. I am, I'm black. <laughs> This is this is this is not for debate, uh, <laughs> based on you know a lot of my uh, physical attributes, and I, I I but I do know that a lot of people who are mixed race are like it. There is um I don't know, it's it's something that I would not want to personally have to deal with defending my my race or yeah, my it's crazy. or my racial but identity. I think it's a, the the thing of it is is like a lot of people just don't let you be both, or let you be you in general. But they're just like pick a side. It's like, yeah. And well, you don't do that because then you're, like, denouncing, things. like, one of your parents, and it just feels weird. I mean, there's, I think there's also how you perceive and the experience that you're having. So, for example, Barack Obama, Barack Obama is is has a, a white mother and a black father, but Barack Obama is having a black experience. So, Barack Obama is treated black by everyone. So, you are where you are, and you are what you experience. So, Barack Obama is indeed having a black experience. Right. When he goes into the world, everyone sees him. They're, all they see is that as a black man. Whether they whether he was fam whether he's famous or not, back yeah. when he was an alderman or whatever his first job, a councilman, whatever he was, mm -hmm. people who didn't know the the you know President Barack Obama, they were just like, that's uh, oh, there's a black man standing behind the counter. So in that moment, Barack Obama is indeed having a black, black experience. experience yeah. So here's the thing. So when they uh, an old interview, they asked me, do I consider myself a black woman? And I said no. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they cut the interview right there, and then it went viral because you know how they do. They mm -hmm. they just wanted to get people caught up. But what I said after that was, I don't have the experience of a black woman. It is unfair to me to say that I'm just a black woman. When I don't present as a black woman, when I walk in a room, I don't look like a black woman mm -hmm. because I have a white parent and I'm very fair-skinned, Yeah. right? So that's not to say that I'm not black. Yeah. But the experience I you're having is not take that, that away of... from black women. Like I can empathize mm -hmm. with things that they go through, but I can't say that I understand, even though I'm black as well. Yeah, and that's that, you know? that and that is, that is your experience as a black woman in this world. Like that is that 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 is yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I don't. But and it, it also it just 
it is, and again, I don't. Have, I, I'm not biracial either. I am. But I'm black saying to, to be in a in a racial relationship is very similar. The, the The conversation is very similar. Trust me, because people just have something negative to say, as if you cannot possibly just actually care about this person. Like yeah, there I, has I, to I, be I an alternative part, yeah. of like you're self hating yeah. or. You know, You're trying to come up more co- by having yeah. a white partner. You want this yeah, proximity to whiteness. Mm-hmm. And it it's says like, more about society than it does about the actual relationship. Yeah, so I absolutely. realize that I realize that when everyone say anything about me, it actually isn't about me. Mm-hmm. It's really just a reflection of how society is and how they view society. So if you see me with a white partner, I understand what your thought process is because what you're saying about me and my partner is true of society as a whole. Right. That is true. There are a lot of issues with black people and with white people and with racial disparities and uh, anti and you know black people uh, having anti-black sentiments in their hearts and their feelings because of the way that we were raised in the world. That is not a falsehood, but it does not make it true for every single person. Just because it is the overarching narrative of the world does not right. mean that it is true in every single instance. And also, you can, but 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 you can have that conversation and also have this one about 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 having a partner that is, like like those two conversations can exist, and you don't have to lump that into my experience because I have a white, uh, uh, my partner happens to be white. And also, I'm not gonna sit here and justify every black dick I've sucked, every every nigga I left come up inside of me. I'm oh, not oh, doing that oh, because oh, to, <laughs> to make you oh. feel to 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 validate myself as a black person. And I yeah. never will do that. And I think that's what a lot of people were, were looking. They were like, well, you have a white boyfriend, so like, t- t- like, like I, I, I never seen that you uh, dated a black dude. I'm like, well, and I'm not going to sit here and do that for you. I'm not right, I'm not recounting right. my history of people I fucked no, and sucked for you. And also, it never like, will. I, like, I have to like be do more black things for them to feel comfortable with me being biracial. Also, yeah. if Monet listed every person she hooked up with, this podcast isn't long enough. We Girl. would be Same. here for... Days like while Monet years. recounts the yeah. countless men who have run up inside her this month mm. alone. Bitch, this morning, bitch. <laughs> I had a pump it up this morning at the house. So, I mean, I'm not doing that. Never will. Okay. Cool. Oh, my God. I love you guys. <clears throat> okay. Now it's time for Drag My Ex. In the world of drag, anything is possible. Today, I've got a gallery of my exes who have undergone dazzling, fierce drag transformation using AI. Today, Bob Monet, I need your help rating these drag looks. Okay. Okay, Let's see who we got. Comment, view, share, rate, whatever you'd like. I have not seen these yet. Okay. You have to tell me who they are, too, because I might not know or might not recognize them, too. Okay. I I don't even know what X's they put up, so, like, (laughs) I'm really nervous. It's going to be your middle school X. (laughs) (laughs) 21 Savage. (laughs) How do you feel about my ex, 21 Savage, in drag? This is is a a genderfuck Brooklyn queen. Yes, and I love this headpiece. This headpiece is everything. I would wear that. The headpiece is giving. The makeup is not. The, the lipstick. This, Why the lips so small? So Twenty one has nice lips, and now we have we have. Uh uh-uh. uh. What did you guys do with the lips? Right. <laughs> this is giving twenty one average. <laughs> <laughs> I think the dragon name is twenty one average. Yeah. No twenty one. Con. Oh, oh, look at that waist though. No. <laughs> she she's giving clivage. Is what she's giving. Her the waist is tiny, and why her hands white? Uh, there is, there, yeah, this is the AI queen. She, she, what is happening? If anyone's gonna be AI queen, Kanye West would be an AI. Would be she an, would. An AI queen. No, there, yeah, this is this is a I wild will say, look. Bob, I used I used to wear wigs like that. Remember my, my little poops? Used to, bitch. Recently, I'm on the tour. Yes. Bitch, <laughs> on the tour, to, this is Monet. So this, is, <laughs> this is Monet Exchange. <laughs> Monet West. <laughs> work. Ooh, Machine Gun Kelly. You, you, you dated Machine Gun Kelly? I did. He's hot. Yeah, he's he hot. He is hot. Yeah, machine gun Kelly's very honestly, yeah. this queen's giving. I'm obsessed with this queen. This queen looks the look is great. <laughs> I love the makeup. She kind of like 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 a like a professional wrestler vibe almost. It's very Harley. She's she's like the the sister of Harley Quinn. Harley what's that? What's Quinn. that? Margot Robbie's. This is, this is um uh not machine gun but like water pistol Kelly. <laughs> this, yeah, this I'm into it. Yeah, yeah, too. No, uh, uh, Jr. Fifteen Kelly. Oh my God, Jr. Fifteen. <laughs> 
Not GR15. Oh, okay, Wiz is my number one celebrity crush of all time. All right, fall back. <laughs> <laughs> my husband. Fall no, back. He's, he's my ex husband. He's one of my favorite people on earth. I love him. He so seems much. so dope. That this drag is though. terrible. Yeah. Way, this is horrible. This, this, this is terrible. This is low key Lil Nas X. <laughs> Honestly, this is a chop. <laughs> this Whoever is low key Lil Nas X. This is so bad. The, the Mick, uh, yeah, this is not a. Uh uh-uh. uh. Well, I'm sorry, Wiz. And why? I don't and know why? why they did this to you, baby daddy. And his titty's so, so chocolate. But Wiz Khalifa is, is a is beautiful. Just a beautiful. He is, he is beautiful. hot. Let's look at the undrag picture just for a second. Yes, oh, Wiz Khalifa's hot. This is a be- This is a beautiful man. <laughs> does he does does he do tattoos as well? No. Oh, okay. He's a rapper, Monet. I know, but I don't know. Sometimes you can do <laughs> no, tattoos. He tattoos. Does he does he does he have a side hustle? As a ta- as a, does he have a side hustle as a tattoo artist? No. Bob just having goes to fall back. <laughs> that was good. You know, and yes. I don't think Wiz Khalifa's interested. So I think I think everyone's safe here. <laughs> I don't think Wiz Khalifa has any interest in me or anything. I have going on. No, he's a sweetheart. He is such a sweetheart. Tell him I, I said, hey, Monet, no, this is my number eight. Ooh, I love Wiz Khalifa. Yeah, yeah she does. So she does. He is. And yeah. also, you remember he was, when he was in his Thirst Trap era? All them gym videos? I do remember that, <laughs> that very was, well. That was, that was one of the greatest internet moments in, in the history. Wiz, bring it back. I'm going to tell him to watch this. We, those of us who, we really missed that. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it, was, it was good content. I'm going to tell him to bring it back. <laughs> Did you notice that, you're, that all of your Instagram views were up when, when, during that time? Did you notice that? Yeah. Because we like that content, Mr. Khalifa. Wow, well, we yeah. talked about everything. We talked about aliens. We talked about the fourth dimension. We talked we about did. white motherfuckers. We talked about, we talked about so black and yellow. Shit. Black and yellow. That's, that's when we that's first you. met. Oh. oh my God, that is me. <laughs> Wait, what? All these oh years, God. all these years. <laughs> I realized he wrote black and yellow about me <laughs> today on this podcast. Oh, oh, oh shit. Dad, I'm screaming. Um, Bob and Monet, thank you so much for coming on. I hope all my listeners check out your podcast, Sibling Rivalry. But is there anything else that you want to tell the people to look out for? Um, you all can catch me on tour. You, uh, I'll, I'll be on, on the celebration tour with Madonna this year. So please feel free to come see me at some uh, uh, stadium or arena can near I get, you. Can I get tickets? You know, I will try to. I'm sure that we can get you some tickets here in LA. I'm sure we can okay. rustle up. She follows me on a Instagram. ticket. Okay, for cool. for for uh for you of all people, I'll, I'll ask Madonna. Can we get Amber Rose a ticket? I'm sure she'll say yes. Okay. Cool. And uh, yeah, I've been doing a bunch of stand up stand up days this fall, and I'm looking out for my tour of my show, um, Life Be Life, and I just did it at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival for two weeks, and um, yeah. I feel good. Welcome back to America. I'm so happy America. to be back in America. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I I love being abroad, but. I love coming back home. Me I love too. being a bra, but I really love being a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, same. Thank you guys so much. This has been so much fun. I so love you guys. Thank you. I love you. you. This is great. And, um, I, continued success to you yes. this podcast. You I too. hope it pops off for you because this is this was really, really fun. It was really cool. fun. And I think also you're having uh, conversations in a way that's really unfiltered and with I think a lot of people are afraid to have these days. Yeah. Because you say something and people don't like the way it sounds and they get and they they go off on you. I think that culture is starting to flip because people are like people can't say they're afraid to say certain the things. The pendulum has to swing the other way at some point. It was yeah. so oh, far listen, this way. It I, has like, to. Th- this interview, I, w- I was censored a bit um, just because you guys carried the interview for me. So thank you. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm, I'm not scared of getting canceled. Like, I really talk my shit. Like, I, I go in. I live. Just I'm how good. I feel. I'm yeah. Good. I can't wait to, 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 to watch and, and listen to some more. This episode is recorded at Spotify Studios in Los Angeles. Subscribe wherever you're listening to this podcast right now, and we'll be back with more soon.